some reason I can't get this. I had a terrible time getting that to drop down. Are we ready? You're ready. Go for it. Okay. Good morning and welcome to Morning Devotions with the Community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Jan and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to this service, know that you are welcome to participate fully. We are recording this service so that others can access it at a time that is convenient for them. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us praise our God who has given us life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Let us rejoice then even in our distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. O oh God, you have claimed us as your own and called us from our darkness into the light of your day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the loving reign of the risen Christ. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Amen. Blessed be God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Okay, we're re reading from Acts. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went, and now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem and was returning home, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may, whom may ask you, does the prophet say this about himself or about someone else? The Philip began, then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, there came, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both the, of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and ba Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. Is there anything in this reading that surprised you? or that caught your attention. The spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. Yeah. <laughs> That's surprising. That's a puzzle. Probably surprised Philip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, woo, what a ride. <clears throat> Do you I understand what you're reading? 
so he did not open his mouth. That not surprised me, but a, a, a something. <laughs> I was surprised that Philip was told to go over to the chariot and join it. Yeah. And then Philip ran up to it and heard him, the prophet reading and asked him, do you understand? For some reason, Moses striking the rock instead of speaking to it came to my mind. And God later punished Moses because of that. Didn't let him go into the promised land. I've often wondered, you know, he gets in this chariot. He doesn't know where the eunuch is going. Um, you know, right. where did where did they wind up? You know, did Philip was not where he wanted to be at the end? Well, I guess he snatched away. So, but I mean, just to get into a chariot and not know where you're going. Yeah, I can't quite read the right side of the document I'm looking at. Okay. I'm, it's blocked. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. No, the other way. Oh, the other way? Yeah, the other way. That's what I can't read. Okay, there we go. Wait a minute, I now I've got it. Thank you. That's the whole doc. Can you see everything now? Yes, I can. Okay, now I can. Thank you for saying so. Okay, now it's gone again. Okay. That's Lord. weird. Well, my computer's been giving me quite a bit of difficulty. I don't it's know. It's not your computer. Uh, okay. I, I can read it a second time for you, it, Jan. It's okay. It's, I mean, Jan, can you see it? No. If you go a little bit, you had it the other way. No. No. Yeah. To the left. Other direction. You to said, the left. I'm sorry, you said right, but no. No. No, to the left. She's, I think her, videos of everybody gets in the way of the oh that may be what it is yeah can you move is it what you can move your video boxes over i can how do i yeah. minimize them click on the minimize button on the top there oh the there we go okay okay i got it good i found it interesting that the uh ethiopian unit the eunuch happened to be carrying a a Bible with him. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Not, not of course, the King James version, but the, <laughs> probably not. This time, listen for a feeling that comes to you from the somewhere in this passage. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip. Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. And now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot and was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked him, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip about whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this about himself? or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak. And starting with his scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here's water. What is to prevent me from 
being baptized. He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. Any particular feelings? Curiosity. Yeah. It's a mystery that he was just snatched away and gone. I think I'm um, amazed at the work of the Spirit. The Spirit puts Philip in this place uh, to help this uh, court official who likely went back to Ethiopia and spoke about his conversion, you know, uh, maybe became part of a new uh, community there, who knows? Uh, and then the work of the Spirit moving Philip on to the next thing. I thought it was great that, you know, he wanted to be baptized right away. He didn't mm -hmm. think yeah. about it. He got it very suddenly. <clears throat> now, I believe I've heard that the Ethiopian church is one of the oldest. And so I guess we could uh, uh, trace his origins to this encounter, right? Oh. Perhaps so, yeah. Never yeah. thought and of that. The, the Ethiopia, you're correct, Bill. The Ethiopian church is, is one of the original Christian churches. You know, there's an Ethiopian church on Route 97 in Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you're going the, at, um, on 97 and oh, Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Right on in the right hand side. side. Yes, right on the right hand side. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw them one morning, you know, all colorful. Like, yeah, in their in their car. Mm. Well, the Ethiopian mm -hmm. claimed to have the Ark of the Covenant with them. Mm -hmm. That it was taken out of the temple before the temple was destroyed and taken down there. They don't show it, they just claim to have it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting in this, uh, this is post-resurrection uh, action of the spirit. Uh, mm -hmm. You get the spirit of the Lord quite active in this, in this section. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our faith would tell us that uh, the spirit of the Lord is still active. Um, here in some very obvious ways, but probably a little more subtly for most of us. But uh, very interesting that uh, uh, they're attributing the, you know, guiding, guiding the eunuch to this place, guiding the, uh, Philip to the place, and then snatching Philip away in the end to send him on to something else to do. So. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, intrigued by the action of the spirit of the Lord here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, I'll read it a third time. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot, and was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. 
and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. And his humiliation, justice was denied. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. What will you take from today's reading and discussion with you as you go about your day? I think this is a lesson uh, for of listening for me. I'm going to listen closely. I have a friend who was bemoaning the fact that her brother had not become a Christian and probably never would. And I told her, you know, things happen. Something can happen and he can be changed in an instant. Um, they're on a trip to Africa right now, and I'm hoping that something lovely will happen while they're on their trip together. So I will remember that the Lord can do things suddenly. Anything else? Looking for opportunities to share your faith, but meeting the person where they are. Oh, that's good. I agree. I think it's being open. You know, there's not going to be lightning and, you know, music and, you know, but you kind of have to be open to it and go forward. And then sometimes it comes back to you. Wow. Maybe I was put in that person's path mm -hmm. to help with something that is um, challenging to them, that they need some support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to move on? Yes, let's yes. move on. Sure. Okay. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? I think maybe the second canonical today. Song of praise. Mm -hmm. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us offer our intercessions, petitions, and thanksgivings. May we live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May all people receive the good news of Christ's victory. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May those born to new life in the waters of baptism know the power of Christ's resurrection. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May those who suffer pain and anguish find healing and peace in the compassion of Christ. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. May we be united in Christ's undying love with all who have passed through the gates of death. Redeemer of Israel, hear our prayer. Do we have any intercessions or thanksgivings to share this morning? For Ed and Lois. For Terry and Mike. For the Evans as they go on their big trip next week. Oh, yes. Thanksgiving for the work of Al Hagar and for the opportunity to uh, be with the executive director and the uh, U.S. director of operations yesterday. Amen. Thank Thanksgiving to all the performers who will be performing at the concert and sharing their mm. gifts on Saturday. <clears throat> Any others? We'll move on. Which Sorry, one am I reading? The one that's here. Easter three? Okay. Yeah, I, I meant to delete the other one. Sorry about that. That's all right. Holy and righteous God, you raised Christ from the dead and glorified him at your right hand. Let the words of scripture fulfilling in Jesus, your son, burn within our hearts and open our minds to recognize him in the breaking of bread. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation and gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of the world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying, through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. 
Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Amen.